Welcome. Um, lovely to be here. Lovely to be presenting it today as the first speaker. Um, well, my intention is to go through a number of slides which will last probably about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. Um, I know for a, um, a, a part of the audience that export is a big thing for you. The, what I want, to, and I I'm suspect that you, you will know quite a lot more about export, but what we want to do is talk about our experience over the last 17, 18 years, um, and maybe a little bit of a flavor of some of the things that have been done in the last year that have helped us. So, um, a bit of background, perhaps. So, our business, first of all, we make wildlife products. So what are they? They are products that um, are bird houses, um, hedgehog houses, um, bee, bee houses. So all of them to create an environment for those animals to be able to live in. Um, interesting things about the export markets that actually in some countries our, um, our products wouldn't sell because, for instance, in America, they don't have hedgehogs. So, some, so you do need to know about your product and how it works in other markets. So a little bit about us. So we design conservation, education and habitat creation um, products. So it's about um, setting up environments. You'll maybe be aware there's a world shortage of bees. Uh, and that's a big thing for us is being able to help people to educate them uh, about why there's a shortage of bees and what people can do about it. I'll come back to that a bit later. Um, we began manufacturing Tetbury in Gloucestershire. There's a great source of wood. Um, that's why we started there. And actually, we've got a couple of sites in the UK now. Um, but we do tend to, and quite quickly, we partnered with FSC. So this is a, a, a particular um, forestry stewardship commission, which is to do with um, wood and wood that has been grown ethically. Um, so we linked up fairly quickly with suppliers outside of the UK to supply our products. Um, and we do that in Europe and in Asia. Um, and we supply many end users in both the UK and Europe and now into America. Um, and as we said, we, we manufacture to a, a professional standards and supply both to the UK and to export. The, a little bit about our products, so the categories that we fit into. So uh, bird care, um, people are um, primarily interested in birds quite quickly, they'll purchase products in that area. We then move on to uh, wildlife care products, and I was talking about um, uh, bees and butterflies, and those are pollinators which help to be able to uh, boost the yields for a lot of farmers. So that's a very important area for us. We, it tends to be um, both uh, individuals, so um, clients as well as commercial customers that we sell to. So we, we have um, educational products, so we've designed a lot of products and our stand is just over the way. Here's a, an educational product that we sell, sells extremely well. Kids in their um, school environments will, will have this purchased by um, uh, the school or parent-teacher associations. Um, but conservation, cameras, that people are able to use, and then we have bespoke tailored products. So that's a little bit about the range of our products. Um, in terms of exporting, and this, and obviously this is the part that um, most people would be interested to know about. We, our approach as a small business, and we're a two million pound turnover business, um, our um, approach for um, trading in any export market is to go direct to end users. Um, our our opportunity through distributors and agents we find quite limited, and invariably that's to do with that our margins are quite um, fine, um, and the end users want to make sure that there's, there's no uh, additional handling that's being undertaken, if at all possible. So what we'll try and do is have direct contact. We'll target probably a dozen or so end users um, in the retail sector and mail order section. Um, our experience in America was that actually we followed a number of our existing direct um, end user customers, so people like Amazon and QVC, so we have a trading relationship with those organizations in the UK. We then followed them into America, and so there was a, that was a nicer in for us. And we'll probably have three or four lines to become established, and then it's the important bit, is making sure that the logistics system um, is the best delivery fit for that particular market. And our experience, and highlighted here, our experience of the, the um, uh, different delivery systems, one in America and one in Europe, are very different. Um, we, 
um, have been using for ever since um, the, the start of the business in America, using a, a fulfillment stockholder. So essentially, it's somebody who will hold on to our stock, doesn't sell it, um, but has some link um, and has a, has a warehouse and some link with distribution um, systems within America. And that's helped us to be able to get our product direct to the customer very, very quickly. So that's a key thing, our product direct to the customer very quickly. The other thing for us is use of logistics network in Europe. So in Europe, we have a, um, it's a different setup. There's obviously, um, there are partners, logistics partners who will transport product from the UK through networks. And you, you, you guys uh, will be very familiar with that. Um, and that allows us to be able to get a single product to a, usually a garden center or a gar sometimes deliver direct to a garden center product, but usually it's garden centers um, throughout Europe that um, we'll be delivering to. Um, and then the next stage, having established ourselves with three or four customers, with three or four lines, then it's about widening that um, appeal to other customers using the right logistics system. So if we've got the right logistics system with those first few customers, invariably it will follow that we can supply other customers um, equally quickly. These are some of the customers that we, we um, trade with. Um, I, I mentioned about Amazon and QVC, and they were a great opportunity for us most recently in America. But um, our background, wildlife, so we first started um, trading, a large customer of ours in the UK is the RSPB. The equivalent of the RSPB was NABU in Germany and uh, LPO in France. So those organizations had a natural affinity. So we, in a way, naturally followed those organizations. And we're doing the same with uh, the equivalent in America. So that, uh, that was an important start for us. So it's a direct trading with organizations and direct trading with kindred spirits, let's say. Um, and then the uh, Trufo and um, uh, FNAC are um, organizations. That's toys, and that organization is a large garden center. So those. Um, and this, this is a, an unusual company in, in Germany who sells just quite distinctive um, stylized products and our products also seem to um, appeal from a design point of view. So um, that company picked up a number of ours and is a, a, large, a large customer of ours. Toys R Us, well-known organization. So that's, um, yeah, so that's a little bit about the uh, customer base that we have. In terms of one of the things that has helped us additionally um, in exporting has been about new product development. So for us, um, to have a well um, set up new product development um, system within our business um, is very important. So first, why is that? Well, it, it inevitably, if you can tailor your products for that market, um, you have a much better opportunity of being able to, to um, sell more products. Um, and the reason I picked on bees and, and the story with bees, um, in America they're, um, uh, they have a, an understanding in America, a slightly different understanding for beekeeping and for a certain type of bee. So there's a, a, a bee in a, uh, both in the UK, Europe and in America. It's called a solitary bee. It's a non-stinging bee. Um, in America, they seem to have understood um, the story about solitary bees. And we went into America with um, selling our product and, and, and thought, gosh, we're going to have to tell this story and say, you know, there's, uh, there's a swarming bees and they sting, but they provide honey. And then there's solitary bees. They don't sting. They don't provide honey, but they pollinate. They knew all of this. And actually, that was quite a surprise for us. So um, what we were then able to do was to be able to um, uh, move to uh, explain our products in more detail and as a result of that they were able to tell us about what was happening in their marketplace that um, uh, wasn't quite being um, satisfied by the existing ranges in America. So we've, we've got in fact some of the, the products are on our stand. We have an urban range um, of products which are selling extremely well in America. You can imagine Americans who are well educated living in big cities going how could this be appropriate for uh, wildlife products. Actually, we were able to listen to that, understand, created this range, and, and sell, and that sold very well. We invented it about a year ago, um, uh, and so that has helped us to be able to uh, to get to penetrate the, the American market. So, world shortage of bees. So, we talked about the people are understanding that, 
Um, and there, we've also found there are different initiatives that are being taken in different countries and, uh, for solitary bees. And we found, again, tailoring our approach to one that's being undertaken in France, one in Germany, one in the USA. Um, that's allowed us to be able to um, create, um, yes, create the, the appropriate product for those markets. Um, we also, again, try to make sure we've got the end users and giving them regular updates on what is happening with wildlife. So the use of Twitter, um, the use of Facebook um, has helped us greatly and has raised the profile of our organization um, in, in addition to having great logistics systems and also having great products. So that's a, a, another thing that's key for us. And um, one of the other things that particularly helped us this time when we've um, uh, looked to grow our share in America about two or three years ago, we looked to undertake some research on what is happening in the marketplace. And UKTI um, were able to help us tremendously with that. They have a, a funded system um, that allows you to be able to access researchers. And uh, we've got a, a researcher who is from a, an American university, was studying in the UK, um, went back to America as part of her um, uh, dissertation and undertook some work for us. So that was great. And UKTI have all these great connections that allow that to, to happen. So great research, that was a, an important part that helped. Yeah, so maybe that was sort of some of the do's, some of the don'ts. Um, and we do find that a number of people saying, oh, uh, gosh, I can't believe it, I'm, I'm not selling anything. Well, don't expect there to be an instant success. And we certainly see our, um, our most recent approach in America, it's gonna take us two or three years of investing in that marketplace, going to shows, visiting, um, having a, a regular dialogue. So that's the first thing, don't expect. The second thing is, um, don't expect to make money in the first year. So it very much is an investment and, and you need to spend the money. So um, commercially viable volumes we know will take a number of years for our product. So you do need to set your, your um, expectations um, for that. Um, and then, as I um, indicated before, don't rely on others. Don't rely on distributors or agents to be doing uh, your selling. Um, and as I said, don't expect that one size fits all. The logistics solutions are not the same, and every continent is different. And certainly we found that hugely so in America and, and Europe. Why exporting? You might say, well, you know, is there not enough... Um, revenue in the UK alone just to be able to um, undertake selling our products. One of the things that we found, and, and it's, it's come home very, very clearly, when in the uh, recession in 2008, 2009, everybody's volumes in our, in our sector were affected. A lot of our competitors, um, their sales dropped significantly, 20, 30 percent. In fact, a number of our competitors, who a few of them are, are sort of rekindled versions, have, have went out of business and um, uh, sort of Phoenix companies. We fortunately were able to ride the storm. We rode the storm because in 2009, 2010, our export sales boosted, particularly in Germany and France. So in the UK, quite um, depressed, um, and our switch of, of sales, traditionally there'd been about 60% of our sales, 60, 70% of our sales had been um, in the UK. In 2009, 2010, that swapped to almost the other way. So it was about 65% went into export, mainly into Europe, 35% in the UK. And then that switched around again a couple of years ago so that we were 70, 30 again. And we're about, you know, about 60, 40 now UK export. Um, and, and our sales have started to grow as well. We, we'd, um, before 2008, our sales were growing by between 10 and 15 percent year on year for about a 10 year period. Um, then it, it flatlined, but against our competitors actually that was, that was significantly better. And now our sales have again started to boost up to 10, 15 percent again. So we rode the storm using export. So that our pioneering into America again, it said we had a small presence in America which had dwindled over the last 10 years started to, to pick up again probably about two years ago and has boosted in the last year or so because we saw that exports um, had, had helped us so hugely since the recession and now sales all round are going well. Again, trading directly with end users and, and uh, we talking with Norman who owns the business, he was saying, well, what was the appeal of, of, of um, trading directly? Well, inevitably, the, the buyers feel happier knowing that if there's any savings 
um, that, that they make them, and that there's not, it's not money isn't being spent unnecessarily elsewhere. So that's the most important thing for our end users, and it, it's a highly competitive market. I've just spent the last two or three hours talking with people about our products, and there's our price, and then there's the end sale price, and the difference between a product sold at six pounds and a product by me, and, and five pounds is the difference between us getting the order or not. So. Those, those a pound can make all the difference to our buyers. So that's a really important thing for us, both in the UK and our export markets. Um, yeah, and that's another thing for us, and I will, a, a plug for UKTI and, and Gardenex have been fantastic for us in the last four or five years. Um, most recently, I said about the um, market research, most recently we went to America um, and we had some support from Gardenex and UKTI for the um, show that we undertook in um, I don't really think where it was in, in um, uh, uh, North America. In where did I go? Las Vegas. Sorry. Yes, that's right. Once you've gone to Las Vegas, um, so they, they were great. Really helpful. Helped us with um, uh, making something that otherwise we probably wouldn't have invested all that money in. So they made it a bit more palatable, and, and um, that it worked a treat for us. Um, yeah, and that's very important for us is having a global um, reputation um, for. Um, good, well-designed products, and that message is getting out into uh, marketplaces and most recently into America. So, a summary of um, what I've said. So, export for us, it helps to level out the sales line, and we will continue to pioneer into new, country, uh, uh, new countries, new continents. So, after America, I'm sure in a few more years' time, then uh, further afield, we may well. We certainly, we've, we've been selling in um, New Zealand and Australia. Um, and South Africa, so we probably pioneer further into those markets. Yeah, it's about targeting those end user customers to gain a critical mass um, and, and grow our portfolio of SKUs. Um, ensure an efficient supply chain, very important, um, and swiftly to customers, and then supporting export development by new product development um, and uh, creating new initiatives to excite the marketplace. And yeah, use the wonderful resources that are on offer.